You're watching KESQ, the desert's news leader, live in high definition. This is News Channel 3, live at 5. The tide is changing in the race for a cure when it comes to breast cancer. Women are no longer waiting for a diagnosis. With genetic testing combined with family history of the disease, women are opting for elective surgeries to get ahead of the cancer. Tonight, stories of survival by two local women who took different paths to beat the looming disease that has taken the lives of far too many. I would go in, have my mammogram, they would have me sit down again, and my stomach would hurt because I knew something was wrong and they would take me into another room and they would have to do a ultrasound to make sure what they saw was, you know, was there and when they did see something in the ultrasound then I ended up having like um, biopsies, mm -hmm. so multiple biopsies. 40-year-old Veronica Lua has a history of cancer in her family. Her mother had eight sisters and five were diagnosed with cancer, including her mother who died of ovarian cancer at the age of 65. Two others passed at a much younger age, triggering worry for Veronica, who always seemed to have trouble with her mammogram readings, but was never diagnosed. That's when she took action and got tested for the BRCA gene to find out what her odds were in getting the deadly disease. What was it like when you were first diagnosed with the BRCA gene? <sighs> I, I had a feeling I was going to be positive, so I was expecting it, I guess, and um, it was scary. It's scary because then in my mind, uh, my kids, you know, come to my mind, you know, now they're at risk. If somebody is BRCA1, there's about an 87% chance that they will get breast cancer in their lifetime. Dr. Janet Eide is a surgical oncologist with the BreastLink Medical Group in Rancho Mirage. She tells me there are multiple mutations that can cause breast cancer, but the two recognized by the Genome Project are BRCA1 and BRCA2. BRCA1 uh, is usually a triple negative breast uh, cancer, which means it's more aggressive. It, uh, does, it's uh, estrogen receptor negative, progesterone receptor negative, and HER2 new negative. Uh, there's also an increased risk of ovarian cancer with this. Veronica was faced with a major decision. Now that she knew she was a target for cancer, she had to make a choice. She debated between elective surgery, double prophylactic mastectomy, which is the removal of both breasts, or continued checkups, which would have to be more frequent. In the underarm, okay, that is the hardest part. How hard was it to make the decision to go through the surgery? I think because of having those abnormal mammograms and my family history, I knew that I needed to, to do this, mm -hmm. and, and I did it. If someone told me today that I was diagnosed with the BRCA gene, I would go get a double mastectomy, prophylactic double mastectomy in a heartbeat. But eight years ago, it was not happening, and now it's like a phenomenon. Kathleen Sunshine O'Brien is still recovering from her double mastectomy and reconstruction. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in November of 2011. In fact, Kathleen and her two sisters, Brenda and Angel, were all diagnosed within an 11-month period. Their mother had breast cancer, and the girls had been tested for the BRCA gene, but did not take action. Actually, to show how naive we all in some ways maybe were, even though we knew it's, we have the BRCA gene, my sister Brenda, who was the first to get it, said, I thought I was the one that took it for the team. So she was shocked when Angel got it. Then when Angel got it, I thought there is no way that all three sisters are going to get it, even though they say you have an 80 to 87 percent chance. You know what? what Kathleen and Veronica have in common is that they were both at high risk for developing cancer because of family history. But both agree women without that risk still need to study up pay attention and ask questions about their medical care. In fact, Kathleen didn't need the double mastectomy, but her decision to do that may have saved her life. I had mammograms on both breasts and ultrasounds on both breasts ahead of time. And the day after my double mastectomy, the doctors came in the room and they said, we've got some more bad news. And I said, what? And they said, we found cancer in your left breast when we were going through the tissue and pathology. The message here is not to be afraid to find out what's going on with your body. There are options for survival. And the first step, if there is a history of cancer in your family, get the bracket test. It's very rewarding because this is something you can prevent. You, know, you pre can prevent breast cancer actively. I mean, if you, you have a patient who has an 87% chance of getting breast cancer after mastectomies, their, uh, they, their prevention is over 90%. So it's very rewarding. 
Well, an update. Veronica is close to a year since her surgery and is feeling great. Her sister and her cousin both have undergone the same procedure because of the family history. And Kathleen is feeling good. She and her sisters are on the road to recovery. And she's also gotten involved in the fight against breast cancer and decorates Western-style boots, which you saw there for sale. A portion goes to charity. You can learn more on our website at KESQ.com. Wow. Yes. Now, should you only get tested for this gene if you have a history of breast cancer in your family? Well, what happens is your doctor, the family doctor, will ask you all those kinds of mm -hmm. questions, you know, and once they know what to ask, and you can discuss it with them. And if you have a history, um, then more than likely they're going to send you that way. Uh, you can ask to take it no matter what, but they lean towards people who have a history. Yeah, an important test. We hear about mammograms all the time, but you don't hear about, uh, what's the gene it's called? It's the BRCA. Again? The BRCA1. Bra mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.